Okay, for today's session, we're going to continue with chapter 3, estimation. So basically, this will be in the, in the form of the inferential statistics. So last time, kita tengok dua chapter yang sebelum ni, iaitu uh, introduction dan juga descriptive statistics. Eh? So whereby it just involved in term of the descriptive analysis of a data set. Uh, starting from the chapter 3, we are already entering the inferential statistics where uh, the topics of inferential statistics where we are looking towards how we can use sample bagaimana kita boleh menggunakan sample untuk menerangkan tentang sesuatu populasi ok, so last time kita dah buat sedikit lah berkenaan dengan estimation tapi kita tak go in detail so in this topic, kita akan go in detail uh, part of the estimation process okay so the learning objective for this chapter is to describe and construct the interval estimation so this is the most uh, the, the point that we want to uh, elaborate in this discussion eh? so how to construct an interval estimation for the mean of the population parameter and for this case we're going to cover for both the sigma unknown and sigma unknown so sigma ni adalah uh, standard deviation for the population eh? so standard deviation for population dengan kata lain dengan some textbook they are using with uh, non variance and unknown variance ok tapi kita gunakan kat sini sigma unknown dengan sigma unknown so tapi kalau dalam textbook kebanyakan you tengok kalau dia tulis dia tak gunakan symbol they will say uh, in instead of sigma they will just state that uh, using non and unknown variance ok non and unknown variance for both large and small sample size so ada benda dua benda kat sini satu unknown and non variance yang satu lagi regarding the sample size whether the sample size is large or the sample size is small ok and then we also going to look at the diff, uh, the same thing but right now we are going to look at the difference of two means so difference of two means maksudnya kita ada dua groups ok we have two groups uh, of data sets and then from each group we can calculate the mean so bila kita boleh calculate the mean that means we can compare the two means here whether is there any difference or not between the two groups ok so in this sense kita tengok dari segi ada tak perbezaan tabulan mean antara group A dengan group B contohnya kalau ada perbezaan adakah ianya statistically significant ataupun tidak but uh, for the significance ataupun tidak kita akan tengok kemudian tapi kat sini pun kita tengok sedikit saja uh, in term of the hypothesis testing using the uh, interval ok the interval confidence interval so tadi yang the first kita tengok untuk satu min saja satu min populasi the second one we look into comparing two groups ok so different between two means so meaning ada dua groups lah and then the third one, we are looking at the difference between two means also, but in this situation right now, it is for dependent sample. Yang tadi, yang nombor dua tadi, untuk independent sample. Maksudnya, kita ada dua group yang independent of each other. Okay, contohnya kalau katakan kita nak compare the height of students for male and female, between male and female. Ada perbezaan ataupun tidak dalam satu group tu. Uh, so yang ni dipanggil sebagai independent sample lah sebab dia tidak bergantung antara satu sama lain tapi yang ketiga ni kita lihat untuk dependent sample so dependent sample ni contohnya katakan kita nak compare uh, test result before and after uh, certain treatment is imposed on the groups ok kita tengok before and after contohnya kalau katakan uh, sebelum kita beri satu pendedahan baru dengan selepas kita beri satu pendedahan baru ada tak perbezaan dari segi skor contohnya ataupun mungkin kita tengok ok seorang pelajar tu dia akan ambil satu test and then kita tengok ada tak perbezaan kalau kata kita beri tuition dekat dia so tuition tu adalah dia punya treatment ok so kita bagi specific tuition pada dia and then tengok dia ambil exam tu sekali lagi Bagaimana dia punya performance? Adakah perbezaan ataupun tidak? Ha, itu yang dimasukkan dengan dependent sample. Makna kata data diperolehi dua kali daripada dat, uh, respondent yang sama. Iaitu uh, pre and post contohnya. Okay. So these are the three things that we're going to look into this chapter. Okay. So far boleh eh? Kita punya objektif. Boleh faham eh? Objektif kita untuk chapter ni. Apa yang kita nak lihat. 
Okay, the first thing that we need to know is exactly what is estimation is all about. Apa sebenarnya estimation ni? Okay, apa yang dimaksudkan dengan estimation? So, in general, estimation is the process in which numerical values collected from a sample are assigned to population parameters. So, dengan kata lain, estimation adalah satu proses di mana kita mengambil satu nilai numerik untuk menerangkan, okay, satu nilai numerik daripada sample untuk menerangkan tentang sesuatu populasi, uh, parameter populasi. So, itu yang dimaksudkan dengan estimation. So, we are looking at a value from a sample that can represent the value or the actual parameter in the population. Okay. So, and in this situation, the value that assigned to a population parameter based on the sample statistic is called estimation. So, nilai itu yang kita panggil sebagai estimation. Sebagai contoh, last time in descriptive analysis, we look into the calculation of mean sample. Okay, kita ada mean sample X bar. Okay, so X bar ni adalah satu estimation. Satu estimate, bukan estimate. So, the process of getting the X bar is called estimation. And the value that we obtain, nilai yang kita perolehi itu adalah dia punya estimates. So, in this case, Kita dapatkan satu S sample mean, X bar. So, kita estimate. So, this is the estimate. So, we use the mean to estimate the population mean. So, we use the sample mean, X bar, untuk kita buat satu telahan berkenaan dengan population mean. Iaitu mu. So, ini adalah proses yang kita katakan sebagai estimation process. Okay. So, that is the situation. Okay. Message ke? Sekejap saya nak tutup yang ni dulu eh. Alright. So, boleh so far eh? So, that is what it means by estimation as in general. So, apa yang maksudkan sebagai estimation secara dasarnya. Eh? So, kita menggunakan sampel untuk menerangkan tentang sesuatu populasi. Dan dalam keadaan di sini, untuk estimation ni. Ada message ke? Ada yang... Okay, tak ada apa masuk eh. Okay. So, dalam keadaan ni sekarang, uh, in estimation, basically, in this topic, we're going to look at into two things. So, one is called the point estimate and the other one is called the interval estimates. Okay. So, kita ada dua. Satu adalah point estimate. So, point estimate ni apa dia? Point estimate ni macam tadi tu lah. Yang kita sample ni. Sample meaning. So, this is the point estimate. Sebab dia menunjukkan satu nilai. So, point estimate is a specific numerical value estimate of a parameter. So, ini yang dimaksudkan dengan point estimate. So, kita ada satu lagi interval estimation. So, we have point estimation and interval estimation. Adakah mean, sample means adalah satu, hanya satu, uh, itu saja kita punya point estimate? No, we have plenty of point estimate. We have the standard deviation as a point estimate and so, so on. Eh? So, the median also is at a point estimate. So, but all these things adalah dipanggil sebagai point estimate sebab dia hanya menunjukkan satu nilai. So, itu sebab dipanggil sebagai point estimate. Okay. So, we're going to look at the point estimate but in detail, basically, we are looking at the interval estimation in this topic. Okay, itu yang kita lebih penting kan. So, tapi untuk dapatkan interval estimation, we need the point estimate to be calculated first before we can uh, obtain the interval estimation. Sebab dia mesti ikut proses lah. Sebab dia ada proses dia. So, a point estimate and sample description of the mean. So, a point estimate is a specific numerical value estimate of a parameter. So, the value calculated from a sample mean, X bar, is the best point estimate of the population mean, mu. So, yang ni kita takkan masuklah berkenaan dengan best point estimate tu benda B, dia panggil, sometimes they call this as blue eh, best linear unbiased estimator. Okay. Okay, dia boleh, ada juga, ada satu statement yang, bukan statement, satu-satu uh, term dipanggil sebagai blue. Okay. So, blue ni refer to best linear unbiased estimated. 
So kita takkan go in detail about this unpiers estimator and so on because that one is not in our syllabus. Okay, biasanya yang melibat yang membincangkan berkenaan best linear unbiased estimator ni yang proof that it is a best linear unbiased estimator normally this is being done by those who are taking uh, major in statistics, major in mathematics uh, dia orang akan buat benda tu lah so untuk kita, kita tak, tak, tak akan go detail on this one however, if you go for your master's degrees in econometric okay, or anything that is related to um, calculation and using of statistic you will learn all these things ok, tapi untuk kita untuk syllabus kita, kita tak masukkan yang blue ni cuma kita kena tahulah apa maksud dia so blue ni maksudnya adalah best linear unbiased estimator so setiap estimator yang kita hendakkan kita mestilah, estimator kita mestilah unbiased, so unbiased maksudnya dia tak pincang, dia tidak hanya menjurus kepada sesuatu kumpulan ataupun kategori sahaja ia mengakumi untuk keseluruhan so itu yang kita nakkan as, uh, as uh, unbiased eh? so the value calculator from a sample mean x bar is the best point estimate of the population mean so ini adalah so x bar adalah satu uh, ataupun sample mean adalah satu point estimate yang terbaik untuk menerangkan sesuatu populasi mean iaitu mu eh? ok in estimation the calculation margin of error is calculated based on point estimate so adalah the new form dia tapi in our case, we are not going to look at it in detail. Okay, kita just tengok sedikit saja. Eh. Okay, so that is in the form of interval estimate. And the most important part here in this topic is how you going to come up with your interval estimation. Okay, dalam point estimate, dia hanya bagi satu point saja. Tapi interval estimate, they give you a range of points. Okay, a range of points. So it is in the form of interval from the lower to the upper value so dia ada dia punya lower value dengan upper value and then this is what we call as an interval estimate so sebagai contoh katakan kita ada satu nilai katakan kita ada satu nilai min kat sini ok so interval estimation dia akan bagi yang nilai ni so this is the interval So, this is the interval estimation. So, I set up as ni IE je lah. Eh. So, this is the interval estimation. So, dia ada confidence level. Dia ada lower and you have the upper value. Okay. So, in this sense, it give you a broader idea where the actual population parameter will lie. Okay. So, dia akan bagi satu idea yang lebih jelas di mana di manakah nilai uh, populasi yang sebenar berada. So, dia ada range dia kat situ. Eh? So, in this sense, in this sense, dia katakan, so, an interval estimate of a parameter is an interval or a range of values used to estimate the parameter based on observation from one sample. Okay, there are two values in the interval, a lower limit and the upper limit of the interval. So, itu yang kita lihat. Eh? So, kita nak tengok. Eh? So, in the interval, it constructed around the point estimate but the estimate may or may not contain the value of the parameter being estimated. Okay, so itu yang maksudkan. Eh? So, kat sini, dia mungkin akan mengandungi nilai tersebut ataupun mungkin tidak. So, ini yang kita panggilkan satu terms yang digunakan dalam ni dipanggil sebagai confidence interval. So, a confidence interval is a specific interval estimate of a parameter determined by using data obtained from a sample by using a specific confidence level and estimate. So, in this situation, the confidence level give you a confidence, okay, some kind of like a confidence Uh, where the data where the actual value will lie. Contohnya kalau kita katakan 95% confidence interval. So we are 95% confidence that the actual value will lie within the lower and the upper limit. Ha, itu yang dimaksudkan dengan confidence interval. Do not confuse with another term where we have a predict, uh, predicted interval. Okay, ataupun predictive interval. So, dia ada dua eh. Prediction interval dengan juga confidence interval. So, confidence interval untuk kita menerangkan secara dasarnya kita confidence berada bahawa nilai populasi sebenar berada di antara lower limit dengan upper limit. 
Tapi kalau katakan prediction interval, dia lebih kepada prediction punya purposes. Okey, sebab tu kalau you perhatikan, biasanya prediction interval is larger to confidence interval. Contohnya kalau katakan saya ada satu regression line, okay, I have a regression line something like this, and then I draw a confidence interval. Okey, bila saya draw confidence interval, saya dapatkan confidence interval saya macam ni. Okay, this is my confidence interval. Contoh eh. So, this is my confidence interval. But, for the prediction interval, it is normally larger than the prediction interval. So, maybe, sorry, uh, maybe it will be something. This one is somewhere here. So, maybe it will be somewhere here. Okay, it is larger than. Principle. So, this is the prediction interval. So, kalau prediction interval, dia lebih kepada prediction purposes. Tapi, confidence interval lebih kepada point estimates. Okay. So, that is the situation. So, that is what it means by confidence interval. Dan itulah yang kita nak lihat kat sini. So, in general, we are looking at the confidence interval. Uh, kalau dalam biasa punya uh, research, kita biasanya kita gunakan sama ada 95%. 90% or 99% but the most common use of confidence level is uh, not confidence level the confidence interval is 95% in social science and business okay dalam uh, the, in the field of business and social sciences normally we are using 95% confidence tapi kalau katakan in medical so uh, it can go up to 99% okay sebab kita nakkan benda yang lebih jelas lebih jitu lebih accurate So, we are looking at a higher level of confidence interval. Okay. But in business and social sciences, normally, the most common values is 95%. So, this is 1 minus alpha, 100% confidence interval. So, do not confuse with the significant level. Okay. Kalau katakan kita ada 95% confidence interval. Okay. CI. So, this is equivalent to, okay, this is equivalent to 5% of significance level. Okay, so confidence level dengan significant level berbeza. So, kalau 95% confidence level, dia punya significant level adalah 5%. Sebab tu kita denote this as this one, 1 minus alpha. So, bila 1 minus alpha, maksudnya 1 minus 5% is 0.05 times 100%. So, this will give you 95% confidence interval. Okay, dia adalah dia punya complement. Eh? So, this is the complement of the significant level. So, confidence level and significant level complement to one another become 100%. Okay. Okay. Alright, so that is the situation in term of what it means by in, uh, interval estimation. And this is the most important part dalam chapter 3. Kita nak kira all these values. Okay, based on certain criteria. Okay, so first thing that we're going to look at is interval estimate for a mean when sigma is known and sigma is unknown. So, maksudnya dalam, uh, dalam keadaan ni, Sometimes we call this as non and sorry, unknown variances. Okay, non and unknown variances. So some textbook they gunakan non and unknown variances. Okay, so the yang dalam tuan tengah kita gunakan sigma is non and sigma is unknown. So, kat sini dia refer kepada population variance, eh? not the standard uh, sample variance. We are considering this regarding the population variance. Okay, bukannya sample variance. Okay, case number one. So, the first case is how you can find the confidence interval of the mean for sigma is known and large sample size. Okay, bila last sample size ni maksudnya dia punya sample size is greater than or equal to 30. So, anything below that is considered to small to be small sample. 
sample size. So this is the tricky part where you need to really understand uh, the concepts. Sebab dia akan, it will make you confused in terms of choosing the right formula. Okay. So you have the sigma non, sigma unknown, small sample size, large sample size, all this combination you need to know and to relate with which is the most appropriate formula to be used. Okay. So it's given by this value. So it is x minus z alpha over 2 sigma over uh, the square root of n and then mu you have x bar minus. So apa yang dimasukkan dekat sini? Okay, yang dimasukkan dekat sini ialah kita nak carikan demi confidence interval. You have the x bar over here. Sorry, not x bar. Eh. Okay, you have mu over here. So, you want to locate the confidence interval. Okay. So, this is basically when you want to estimate the mu. So, you are using x bar. So, you locate these two values. Because this is the distance between the lower and upper limit towards the point estimate. So, the z alpha over 2 here give you the difference. So, this difference eh? so, is. Sebab tu dia ada minus dengan plus. So, minus dia akan kurang lah. And then plus dia akan lebih besar. Okay. This is the most common values for z alpha over 2. So, kalau you tak ingat yang ni pun tak apa. You boleh refer kepada table, statistical table yang disediakan untuk masa panel exam. Eh? So, you boleh refer dekat situ. So, bila katakan Z alpha over 2, kalau katakan dekat sini 90%, kenapa dia jadi Z alpha over 2? Because in this situation, when you deal with the confidence interval, so this is your distribution. So, this one is a two tail. So, bila two tail, dia akan ada sebelah kiri dan sebelah kanan. Sebab kita nak dapatkan confidence interval kan? So, kita ada yang ni lower, yang ni upper. Okay, the point in the middle, so the part in the middle here, this is the 95% area. Okay, so that means the significant level, kalau katakan untuk yang 95, so you take refer yang ni, so 95% area. So that means, both of these, sebelah kiri dan sebelah kanan, combined mesti jadi 2.5, uh, jadi 5%. Eh? So that means it will be 2.5% over here, so this will be 2.5% over here. So, this is why we have Z alpha over 2. Kalau Z alpha saja, so in this situation, you have this thing. So, this one is Z alpha over 2. So, this is Z alpha over 2. So, this is minus. This is positive. Kalau katakan 1 tail, dia akan jadi macam ni. So, this one is just Z alpha saja. Okay. So, this is 1 tail. So, yang ni akan jadi 0.5 lah. 0.05 tapi yang ni 0.025 0.025 so combine akan dapat 0.05 so that's the difference between two tail and uh, one tail so di sini sebab tu kita gunakan z alpha over 2 here sebab kita ada kiri dan kanan kalau ada kita ada hanya kiri saja ataupun kanan saja dia akan jadi z alpha saja okey so, for 90% confidence interval, so the Z alpha over 2 values is 1.645. Okay, then uh, you can memorize this value. Kalau tak, tak boleh nak hafal pun tak apa, you boleh always refer to the statistical table. Sebab so, you are allowed to bring in your statistical table during the exams. Alright. So, for the 95 confidence interval, so you have Z alpha over to 1.96 and for 99% confidence interval, the Z alpha over 2 is 2.58. Okay. So, that is basically apa yang kita nak lihat. So, this is the illustration yang saya tunjukkan tadi. What it means by 95% confidence interval of the mean. So, kita ada mu dekat sini. So, kita ada kita punya mean pop, uh, population mean over here. And then, we have z alpha over 2 sigma square root of n. And z alpha over 2 sigma divided by square root of n. 
So this is the distribution of x bar. So kita akan dapatkan dia punya confidence interval kat sebelah kiri ni. So this is estimate by this one lah. Okay dekat bawah tu. Okay this is estimate by this part. Sebab yang ni adalah dia punya area. So kita ada x bar. So mu minus this value. So you get the confidence level or the, the lower limit. Mu plus the error, you get the upper limit. Okay, you get the upper limit. So, these are the ways to calculate the confidence interval. Okay, so basically in the middle here, it comprises of 95%. So, 2.5% uh, on the left, 2.5% on the right. That give you alpha equal to 5%. And confidence level is 95%. Okay, the significant level. So this part, this is the significant level. Okay, and then this part is the confidence level. Okay, dapat eh? Boleh follow so far? Okay. Okay, so next we're going to look at, so this is, okay, mungkin akan ada yang tertanya-tanya, mana datangnya uh, formula ni kan? So, yang mana datangnya yang nilai this part? Okay, what is this actually? So, this is actually the standard error of the means. So, we call this as STX bar. Okay. So, standard error of the mean. So, kalau kat sini dia gunakan variance and uh, non-variance. So, this is the standard error of the mean. Eh? So, this is the standard error of the mean. So, basically kalau kita nak tahu dia punya nilai confidence interval in general. So, it's just simply x bar plus minus z alpha over 2 times the standard error. Okay, the standard error. So, kenapa sigma over square root of n? So, kenapa sigma over square root of n? So, this goes back to the discussion on sampling distribution. So, yang ni you boleh tengok dalam slide saya yang saya share dekat dalam saya punya uh, website. Eh. So, dalam course website, you can look at the slides in there that we discuss on how we come up with this formula. Okay, with the sigma divided by square root of n. Kenapa square root of n? So, you can check on that one. Okay. So, basically, this one is based on repeated trial where if you have a repeated trial from a uniform distribution, it will become a standard normal. Okay. <coughs> so, yang tu saya tak discuss kat sini. So, you all boleh go through the slides yang saya share dekat dalam saya punya course website ya. So, nanti boleh tengok dekat course website. Ada slide kat situ. Okay, let's see one example here. How do we use this information? Okay, says here a researcher wishes to estimate the number of days it takes an automobile dealer to sell Azar Avio. A sample of 50 cars. So, kat sini dia bagi sample kat sini. So, they give you the sample. So, it says here, sample of 50 cars. So, in this situation, 50 cars, this is a large sample, right? Because it's greater than or equal to 30, right? So, yang ni dah 50, dah lebih daripada 30. So, it is considered to be large sample size. At a mean time on the dealer lots of 54 days. So, dia bagi dia punya mean time. Is 54 days. Okay. Assume the population standard deviation. So, dia bagi ni. Assume the population standard deviation. So, that means population standard deviation to be 6 days. So, this means that you have a non-variance. Okay, non-variance. Sigma is given. Okay, sigma is given. Find the best point estimate of the population mean and the 35% confidence interval of the population mean. Okay. Alright, so in this situation, so the best point estimate 
is mean. Okay, the sample mean is the best point estimate of the population mean. So remember tadi dalam statement yang pertama sekali kita nyatakan dalam interval uh, dalam point estimates bila kita bincangkan point estimate we already mentioned that mean the sample mean is the best point estimate for the population mean. So in this situation the sample mean is 54 days so that means the best point estimate is 54 days. So you have the x bar to be 54 days. And then the given sigma is 6.0. So dia dah bagi kat sini. Okay, dia bagi kat sini kan. The population standard deviation to be 6 days. So that means sigma. So dia katakan kenapa sigma, kenapa bukan S. Because this one is population standard deviation. So we use the symbol sigma to represent the population standard deviation. And n here is equal to 50, so that means you have a large sample size and you want the confidence interval to be 95% confidence interval, right? So that means with a 95% confidence interval, so you have the value of z to be equal to 1.96. Okay? So based on this information, you can come up with the confidence interval using the formula x bar minus z alpha over 2 sigma divided by square root of n ok, so left and right ataupun you boleh gunakan yang ni lah so mana-mana satu yang bersesuaian ok, both can be used ok so based on this one you can see that you substitute the correct value into the uh, formula then you have the lower and upper limit of the confidence interval to be 52 and 56 okay what does this means this means that one can say that 95 percent or i can say that i am 95 percent confidence that the actual or the true population mean lie within the values of 52 days and 56 days. So, maknanya, kalau kita ambil 100 sample, so 95 of them will be having the values between 52 to 56. Sebagai contoh lah, andaian eh. So, andaian ni macam tu lah. Lebih kurang, analogi dia macam tu. Lebih kurang. So, maksudnya kalau kita ada 100 data, 95 data akan berada di antara 52 ke 50 sebagai contoh uh, bukan exactly eh. saya just andaikan analogi ni macam tu lah apa yang dimasukkan dengan 95% confidence ni tadi ok so in this case they can just say that one can say with 95% confidence that the interval between 52 and 56 days contain the population mean the true population mean based on a sample of 50 automobiles ok so that is how you interpret the confidence interval. Okay, right? Or you can just use the second one. So the second one is just simply plus minus sama je benda tu. So x bar plus minus. So from there you can get the uh, values for the uh, confidence interval. Okay, let's say I want to change this one instead of using 95% confidence interval. I want it to be 90%. Okay, I want it to be 90%. Ataupun 98%. What will change? So, there's nothing change in the formula except for the value for the Z alpha over 2. So, instead of using 1.96, kalau katakan kita gunakan, uh, let's say I'm using 90%. Okay, so in this case, the z alpha over 2 will be 1.645. So instead of 1.96, so saya akan tukarkanlah dengan 1.645. Same thing with this one. So saya akan tukar dengan 1.645. Will other value change? No. Other value will remain the same as 54 for the best point estimate and then 6.0 for the standard deviation and square root of 50 for the sample size. 
So yang berubah hanyalah yang Z alpha over 2 ni untuk dapatkan 94% confidence interval. Okay. So that is for the first case. So ingat the first case. Yang ni case apa? Case sigma non and n is greater than or equal to 30. So ini case yang pertama. Okay, let's see the second example over here. Okay, apa second example ni kata pula? The second example states that a large department store found that it averages 362 customer per hour. So, dia kata kat sini, dia tak bagi secara direct eh. So, dia katakan averages. So, averages to 32 hours customer per hours. <coughs> Bila sebut average, maksudnya mean lah kan. So, this is average. So, this is the sample mean. Okay. Assume that the standard deviation is to 29.6. So, assume that the standard deviation. So, this ni dia bagi dia standard deviation. Okay. And a random sample of 40 hours was used to determine the average. So, dia ada dia punya standard deviation, 39.6, and a random sample of 40 hours. So, random sample, this is the sample size. So, dia nakkan 99% confidence interval. Okay. So, in this case, kalau 99% confidence interval, you have 2.58 over here. Okay. This refer to... Two point five eight, okay, and then so the standard deviation again the same. The standard deviation is twenty nine point six, so you have twenty nine point six over here. So you replace with this one, and then you have random sample of forty hours. So forty hours you will be replacing with the n, and then you have the average of three hundred and sixty two hours. So, this is for the X. Okay. So, you just need to know, kalau you perhatikan kat sini, once you have identified the question correctly, you get the information from the question and then you identify the correct formula to be used. The next part is just a follow through, substituting the correct value into the formula. Okay. Once kita dah dapatkan dia punya informasi apa yang diberi dan daripada situ kita boleh nyatakan dia punya formula yang betul yang perlu digunakan. Okey berdasarkan informasi yang diberi sama ada yang macam saya katakan tadi adakah sigma diketahui, variance diketahui ataupun tidak. Okey variance populasi, so variance populasi diketahui ataupun tidak. Apakah dia punya point estimates, mean dia berapa? Berapakah dia punya sample size? Adakah sample size dia besar ataupun kecil? So, besar maksudnya lebih besar ataupun sama dengan 30. Kalau kecil, kurang daripada 30. Okay. So, once kita dah identify itu, kita dah tentukan kita punya formula yang betul. Just substitute and then calculate. And then just explain. So, in this situation, you get the value to be between 349 and 374. So, hence, one can be 99% confidence. Okay, you round the values. Okay, that the mean number of customer that the store average is between 350 and 374 customer per hour. Okay, kenapa kita round off the value here? Sebab this one melibatkan customer, number of customer. So, customer is a countable value. Okay, countable variables, countable data. So, customer dah countable. So, kita boleh bilang 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, that means kita perlu dapatkan nilai yang uh, tepat lah dalam bentuk integer. Okay. <coughs> Alright. So, that is the situation. So, you have 350 and 374. Okay, sebentar eh. Let me pause the video for a while. Okay. 
So anybody any questions? So boleh follow eh. So itu yang masukkan dengan uh, yang diterangkan dalam example kedua ni. So that means you can calculate the values. So the most important part here is for you to understand the information given to you in the exam questions and try to relate with the correct formulas. So kena identify betul-betul apakah. So yang the most important part here kat sini adalah kita nak tahu sama ada variance non ataupun tidak. Kalau variance non, sample size dia apa? Okay, itu yang perlu kita dapatkan dahulu ya. Eh. Alright. So all these formula normally kalau you tengok dekat past semester exam papers, they are given, uh, they give you the formula. So please look at the past semester exam papers and identify what are the formulas being given and what are the formulas not being given. Okay, so that you know uh, whether to memorize or not to memorize the formulas. Okay, the second case, okay, ni case yang kedua. So, the second case is where mean uh, the sigma is unknown. Okay, dengan kata lain, in this situation, the population standard deviation is not given. Okay, population standard deviation is not given or the population variance is unknown okay the population variance is unknown but we have a large sample size okay we have a large sample size okay dua keadaan kat sini so first terhatikan kat sini kita ada sigma is unknown and then kita still ada large sample size okay so whenever this is the situation you still can use the uh, z distribution to uh, to get your values okay your apa pergi tu eh the critical values okay the critical values you still can use z distribution okay however in this situation right now since your sigma is unknown okay or the kind of sigma is unknown so since our sigma is unknown, so you use sample standard deviation. Okay, we use the sample standard deviation to replace the population variance ataupun population standard deviation. Okay, so that's why in this situation, you perhatikan dekat sini, instead of using mu, oh uh, sorry, sigma, we are using s over here right now. So, kita gunakan s dekat sini. Okay, we are using s. But, uh, but we still maintain the use of z alpha over 2 because of the large sample size. So, this one goes back to what uh, the terms that uh, in statistic we call it as the central limit theorem. Okay, the central limit theorem. Eh? Uh, so, yang tu boleh tengok lah. Boleh baca untuk dapatkan lebih maklumat berkenaan dengan central limit theorem. Di mana di sini dinyatakan uh, as the sample size increases, the distribution goes towards the normal distribution. Sebab tu kita masih lagi boleh gunakan z alpha over 2 <coughs> okay so for a large sample size kita gunakan z alpha over 2 even though the sigma is unknown the uh, the variance is unknown the population variance is unknown we still can use the z distribution for the critical value however instead of using the sigma because sigma is unknown so you estimate the sigma by using the sample data Okay, you estimate the sigma by using the sample data. Okay, okay so as in example 3.4, it says here, the following data represent a sample of the asset in million of ringgit of 30 credit banks in Malaysia. Find the 90% confidence interval of the mean given the standard deviation for the following data is 14.405 ok dia bagi the standard deviation tapi kat sini hati-hati eh sebab dia tak katakan given the standard deviation saja they just mention here given the standard deviation 
for the following data. Nampak tak dia katakan? For the following data. So, for the following data ni maksudnya. Okay, this is a sample data eh. Bukannya populasi. Sebab tu kita gunakan S. Kenapa dia bagi S ni? Sebab kita nak you all kira lah. Nak kira panjang sikit kan. So, however... In this situation, you don't have the point estimate. So, point estimate kita adalah X bar. Right? So, in this situation, you need to find the X bar. So, macam mana dapatkan X bar? So, X bar is given by the summation of XI divided by N. Right? So, maknanya you kena tambahkan semua nilai ni. 12.23 plus 16.56 plus 4.39, plus 2.89 until plus 2.76 and then divided by 30 because you have only 30 credit banks, right? So divided by 30, you should get the value to be 11.091. So in this case, you will get this to be 11.091. If this is correctly calculated, kalau silap, maklumkan pada saya. Okay. So you have this value, so 11.091, and then you have the Z alpha over 2. So Z alpha over 2, so in this case, kita nakkan 90% confidence. So 90% confidence, Z alpha over 2 is equal to 1.645, right? <coughs> okay. And then again, the same thing with the last example, instead of using, so right now, instead of using the mu, oh sorry, the sigma, you are using the sample standard deviation here. So sample standard deviation is given by 14.405, and then you take divided by the square root of 30 like before, and then calculate the values. So you get the value, the interval to be between 6.765 and 15.417. Okay, so you get this value. And then explanation sama saja macam sebelum ni. Okay, explanation sama saja macam sebelum ni. Eh. So one can be 95% uh, 90 confidence that the population mean of the asset of all credit union is between. Uh, kat sini dia katakan all credit unions. Okay, kenapa dia tak pakaikan all credits, uh, 30 credit banks? Sebab yang ni dah jadi inferential. Eh? So, dia dah inferkan untuk populasi. Uh, sebab tu gunakan all credit union. Dia bukan katakan 30 credit unions. Eh? Uh, bukan katakan 30 credit banks. Tapi untuk 30 credit unions. So, sebab dia kata kat sini. So, in this case, you have the main asset of all. Okay, 95% of main asset of all. All credit union is between 6.75 million and 15.417 million based on sample of 30 credit union. So, kat sini baru dia letakkan dia punya sample. Nampak eh? Cara pen, uh, penulisan ataupun dia punya explanation. Based on a sample, you tell about a population. So, dia mesti ada perkataan based on sample ni. Sebab yang ni, kita gunakan daripada sample. Okay. So, that is for the example. Okay, you can also get this information from the SPSS. So, this is the how you get the SPSS ni output. Eh? So, macam mana kita nak dapatkan dia punya upper and lower limits. <coughs> Okay, so if you want to get the confidence interval, so kat sini dia bagilah dia punya mean eh, so you can get the mean. So you have the mean to be 11.0907, so ni dia the output SPSS. And then the standard deviation tadi dia bagi S2, so 14.405.45. And then the standard error of the mean, so standard error of the mean ni yang mana? So, yang ni is actually this part. So, this is actually the S divided by the square root of N. Okay, kalau tak je, you akan habis. So, this one will be the 
divided by the square root of here you have 30 okay the standard error of the mean so this part eh? so this is the part over here okay this part eh? so this part refer to this one okay standard error of the mean so if you cut it 14.405 divided by square root of 30 you get 2.63006 okay and then the second part of the output give you the one sample test so this is a t test t test one sample test for t test eh? so you get uh, you have the t values here degrees of freedom and then the significance and then you have the mean difference so you need to put us but mean is the different point but this is just one and so the test value equal to zero eh? and then you have the 90 percent confidence so you're not going to see 90 percent confidence you have 6.6219 and 15.5995 okay you will see that the value is slightly different from the one you have just calculated tadi kita calculate yang ni kan okay why is this happening okay the reason is that in SPSS all the analysis is using t distribution okay students t distribution which is an approximate value of the z distribution okay approximate value of the z distribution so kenapa dia tak gunakan z kat sini sebab kalau nak gunakan z agak sukar sebab dia kena ubah lah dia punya ni eh. so dia boleh dia buat tak ada masalah but uh, they will have to do the script lain sikit eh Okay, it assumes that all the values is small samples. Okay, small samples. So that's why we are using the t distribution. So to make it simple in the form of analysis. Okay, sebab tu nilai kat sini berbeza. Okay, sebab bila kita gunakan dekat sini, kalau nak dapatkan dia t distribution, nak dapatkan dia punya nilai dekat sini. Basically, they are using the T, uh, the critical value from the T distribution. So, kalau tengok T distribution, you kena tengok lah. Dia punya T distribution, saya check dia punya, ah, tak ada practical ni. Okay, you boleh tengok dekat T distribution, dia akan bagi lah nilai dia berapa. Eh. We try to get the tables, kalau ada. Sekejap ni. Boleh tengok tu. Okay. Okay, so kalau saya nak kaya ninety percent, eh, so ninety percent nak nanya dia adalah uh, ninety percent, it will be. 0 0.05 eh? so 0 0.05 so I want it to be 29 so 1.699 okay 1.699 Okay, so you can try it here. So 1.699. Okay, so I try it here too. But eh, so I try it here at the front here. So 1.699. And then multiply with 2.3. Okay, two point six three zero zero six and then plus eleven point zero nine. Okay, 
Okay, so saya akan dapat ini. So kalau saya gunakan yang T distribution ni. <coughs> okay, for the T distribution untuk kita akan gunakan instead of using kalau tadi kita gunakan Z alpha over 2 kan. So dia akan dapat yang ni. So dia akan dapat X bar plus minus T alpha over 2. B, the mean degrees of freedom and then multiply with the standard error of the mean. Okay. So, in this situation, untuk yang this one, so 90%, so T 0.1 divided by 2 for 29 degrees of freedom. So, this give you 1.69 Nine. This is from the table, eh? so from table statistic. So, you boleh gantikan dalam formula, you akan dapat nilai ni lah. Dua nilai ni. So, this is using the T distribution. That is why it is a bit different from the one where you do calculation manually. So, bila kita gunakan calculation manually, kita menggunakan Z. Apa over 2. Nilai dia 1.645. And then berbeza dengan nilai T, iaitu 1.645. 699 Okay. Fine. <coughs> so you have to be very very careful in the final exam bila dia nyatakan confidence interval. So jangan just simply ambil dekat sini. So you can you can take this value if based on the information given you also will uh, to calculate it manually untuk kiranya secara manual pun anda menggunakan t distribution. So of course it will give you the same answer. Tapi kalau macam keadaan sekarang ni, manually you have to use Z distribution. Tapi dalam output menggunakan T. So tak boleh ambil secara direct. Okay, faham eh? Okay, this is the calculation based on the output. Eh? So you boleh ambil. So yang ni dia ambil daripada output. Sebab tu kalau yang ni, kita tak boleh just ambil straight daripada nilai ni eh. Confident interval ni tak boleh ambil terus 6.6219.15.5 You have to calculate separately Sebab yang dalam tu dia menggunakan T Yang ni kita gunakan Z alpha Cuma kita boleh ambil nilai yang diberi lah So yang ni kita ada nilai untuk X bar Kita ada nilai untuk standard error dan juga dia punya nilai lain dah So boleh ambil terus daripada output Okay, you akan kira dapat lah jawapan yang sama Okay, itu adalah kes yang kedua. So, saya remind balik. Kes yang pertama, di mana kita ada non-variance and large sample size. Kes yang kedua, kita ada unknown variance but large sample size. Dan kes yang ketiga adalah, bila kita ada unknown variance and small sample size. Okay. So, bila small sample size, in this situation, kita akan gunakan T distribution. Okay, student T distribution to approximate the value for the Z distribution. Okay, T distribution dengan Z distribution adalah lebih kurang sama di mana uh, as the sample size getting larger and larger, the T distribution will mimic the Z distribution ok, kalau semakin nilai-nilai T bila sample size semakin meningkat maka T distribution tu akan menghampiri Z distribution sebab tu kita gunakan student distribution as a, an approximate to the Z distribution ok ini adalah ciri-ciri untuk T distribution, so saya rasa yang tu boleh baca sendiri lah eh. so it says here the T distribution is like a standard normal distribution in this way it is a bell shape sama macam bell shape it is symmetric about the mean the mean median and mode are equal to zero and are located at the center of the distribution the curve never touch the x axis okay so this T distribution differs from the standard normal distribution in the following ways the variance is greater than one okay variance is greater than one Standard normal variance is always equal to 1. Okay. So, we get standard normal. So, we have standard normal. Normal normally distributed with mean 0 and variance 1. So, this is standard normal. Okay. Mean 0. Oh, sorry. Mean, mean 0. Yeah, mean 0 and variance 1. 
Okay, this is the standard normal. Tapi kalau untuk yang T distribution, the variance can be more than one. Okay, the T distribution is a family curve based on the concept of degrees of freedom. As the sample size increases, the T distribution approach to the standard normal distribution. Itu yang saya katakan tadi. Eh. So apabila nilai uh, sample size meningkat, nilai T akan menghampiri nilai Z. Sebab tu, kita gunakan student T distribution as a proximate value for the Z distribution. Okay. So, what is the difference with the with this information? So, the only difference is that the critical value. Eh? So, hanya critical value saja yang berbeza kat sini pakai ni. Eh? Okay. So, hanya bagian ni saja yang berbeza. So, kat sini kita kena tengok lah macam mana kita nak baca dia punya tables. So, how to read the table. So, yang lain-lain tu semua sama. Cuma yang berbeza dekat the bahagian dia punya. Uh, apa dia punya critical values. Okay, in the critical values. That's the only thing that differ. So, how to read the stand uh, T distribution. Okay, saya tunjuk kat sini. Saya, saya tak boleh display kat sini. Ada tak? Contoh kat sini, so tak contoh eh. Okay, saya akan just tunjukkan nanti bila you buka limit distribution, you tengok balik lah. So, dalam T distribution, dia ada dua bahagian kat sini. So, dia ada rows and column. Okay, dekat atas ni dia punya alpha. And then over here, you have the degrees of freedom. Okay, dia adalah degrees of freedom. Dia daripada... Hmm, tadi eh. Okay, contohnya kat sini, the degrees of freedom dia start from 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 sampai lah kat sini ada uh, 60, 120, and then infinity. Okay, sampai infinity. And then on top here, you have the degrees of uh, the alpha values. So, this is the alpha values. You have alpha to be 0 0.1. 0 0.05, 0 0.025, and so on. Okay, and the T distribution looks something like this. So you can think of total the Vikampan Rajah. Eh? So when you read the T distribution, always look at the values. So this is T alpha V. So this is alpha. Okay, so that is alpha. So, bila you nak bacakan dia punya T distribution table ni, how to read the data. So, you kena lihat, identify betul-betul, tengok betul-betul gambar rajah tu macam mana. So, kalau gambar rajah tu dah bagi dalam bentuk two tail, so you use the two tail. So, for example, in this case, kalau katakan dalam contoh yang asal kita ada, let's say you have uh, 90% confidence interval. So, in this case, you know that the significant level alpha is equal to 10%, right? So, this is equivalent to 0 0.1. Okay? So, bila you gunakan T distribution, bila you dapatkan confidence interval, so, you have two part over here. So, this one is actually T alpha over 2. This is also T alpha over 2. And then, you have the degrees of freedom. Okay, you have the degrees of freedom. So, bila nak baca, kalau katakan kat sini, dia punya alpha is 0 0.1. Tapi, you nak buatkan confidence the value adalah 12 kan? Kiri kanan, alpha over 2. So, that means in this sense, Kalau kita tengok sebelah sahaja, so alpha over 2 ni, so T alpha over 2, this will become T of 0 0.05, right? Because why? Because you have 0 0.1 divided by 2. So, you get 0 0.05. So, jangan tengok dekat alpha equal 0 0.1, walaupun kita tahu bahawa alpha sama 0.1, kalau kita tengok dekat bahagian kolom yang pertama ni adalah salah. Sebab, Gambar rajah di sini memberikan T alpha over 2 dengan syarat dia adalah sebelah saja. Tengok sebelah. 
Tapi bila kita buat dalam kita punya yang nyata yang betul, kita punya confidence interval kita, dia adalah T alpha over 2. So, T alpha over 2 maknanya T 0.05. So, kena tengok dekat anda T 0.05. And then V ni apa? V ni degrees of freedom. So, kalau katakan N sama dengan 30. So, that means V is equal to N minus 1. So, in this case, sebab kita ada satu saja estimate. So, V is equal to N minus 1. So, this give you 29. So, tengoklah nilai tuan plus 9 kat bawah ni. So, tengok nilai dia berapa dekat sini. So, this will give you the value for T alpha over 2 V. Okay, so that is how you read the table from the T distribution. So, balik nanti, you tengok balik. Lepas ni, you tengok balik table T distribution dalam you all punya textbook ataupun dalam uh, taburan data yang, okay, sorry, sesuatu uh, table yang saya dah sediakan dalam course website. Boleh tengok dekat situ eh. So, check balik dia punya, macam mana dia buat. Okay. So, let's look at one example here. Bagaimana kita nak gunakan T distribution? So, what is the criteria untuk kita tentukan bahawa kita perlu gunakan T distribution? Okay, first of all, kat sini, bila you baca example 3.5 ni, it says here, a random sample of 10 children. So, nampak dah kan ni kan? 10 children. So, kat sini kita dah tahu bahawa we have a small sample size. Okay, small sample size. So, kalau small sample size, kalau sekiranya variance tidak diketahui, maka kita kena gunakan T distribution. Tapi sekiranya variance diketahui, maka kita boleh gunakan Z distribution. Ingat eh? So, kalau nak gunakan Z distribution, sama ada variance, kalau variance diketahui, tak kira lah sample size tu besar ataupun kecil, kita boleh gunakan Z distribution. Tapi kalau katakan Variance tidak diketahui, so we have to look at the sample size. Okay, if the population variance is unknown, so you have to look at the population size, whether is it large or small. So, dalam keadaan sini, kita ada large, uh, a small sample size. So, that means definitely you have to use the T distribution. So, found that the average growth, so dia bagi average growth eh. So, average growth for the first year is 9.8. Inches. So, this will be the X bar. Okay. So, 9.8 ni refer kepada the 10 children. So, that means the punya X bar. That's why you have the X bar here to be then 9.8 and then N is equal to 10. And then assume the variable is normally distributed. So, this will assume normally distributed. Kalau tak ada assumption normally distributed, kita tak boleh gunakan T distribution. <coughs> Okay, they must have the assumption power it is normally distributed. And the sample standard deviation is 0 0.96 inch. So, they bagi sample standard deviations. Okay, so kita akan dapat kat sini. S equal to 0 0.96. Okay. Okay, based on this information, you know that you need to use the T distribution. So, in order to find the confidence interval, so you need the T here, the alpha is equal to, so based on this one, alpha is equal to 5%. Okay, so that means in this situation, alpha over 2 is simply equal to 2.5%, right? So, which is equivalent to 0 0.025. Okay. Okay. So, that means in this situation, you can tengok dekat column 0.025 and then kita tengok dekat row, cari row 9. Sebab dia punya degrees of freedom is N minus 1. So, degrees of freedom here, this is actually N minus 1. So, locate the values over here. So, this will give you the T values. So, this is the T alpha over 2. Okay. So, this give you 2.6262. Yang lain-lain itu semua sama saja dengan sebelum ni. So, give you the confidence interval to be 9.11 and 10.49.
So you can see that therefore one can be 95% confidence that the population mean of the first year growth is between 9.11 and 10.49 inches. Okay. So itu caranya untuk kita dapatkan dia punya confidence interval. Okay. So let's look at another example sama macam tadi tapi di sini sekarang ni dia tak bagi dalam bentuk uh, data yang nyata dia bagi dalam bentuk sample data. So from the sample data you have only 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 hanya ada 7 data saja kan. So that mean in this case n is equal to 7 so small sample size. Okay, you have a small sample size. So, with a small sample size and then variance unknown, so definitely you have to use the T distribution. But in this situation right now, you first need to find the mean and the standard deviation. So, how to find the mean? Just simply add all this value and then divide it by 7. And also find the standard deviation. How to find the standard deviation? By taking the least square of the difference between the data and its mean. <coughs> okay. So, what is your formula? Ni? So, yeah, ni just simply, okay, x bar is just simply equal to summation of xi divided by n. Manakala untuk standard deviation, s is just simply equal to summation of xi minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 ok, so you can dapat lah dia punya nilai kat situ ok, when you calculate this value you should get the value of s equal to 1610.2 so you boleh check sendiri yang ni, so boleh try kira uh, untuk dapatkan nilai x bar dan s tersebut and then based on this information just substitute in the formula for the t distribution to get the confidence interval ok, so in this situation you nakkan 99% confidence eh? so 99% confidence maksudnya dekat sini alpha is equal to 1% so this give you alpha over 2 is equal to 0.5% right so which is equivalent to 0 0.005 okay and then the mean degrees of freedom now so that means you can tengok column yang ada 0.005 and then kat sini you akan cari yang 6 so carilah nilai dekat sini eh. so you akan dapat nilai di sini so this value is this part ok, so, eh. so 3.70 so kita akan check whether betul ke tak enam kosong poin kosong kosong lima tujuh kosong ok, you get 3.707 and then yang lain-lain tu just substitute saja value yang berkenaan and then you will get the answer right ok, so it says here one can be 99% confidence that the population mean number of home fires started by handles each year is between 4,785.2 hours and 9,296.7 uh, hours based on the sample of home fires occurring over a period of 7 years. The okay, explanation to just give a general explanation on the value obtained between the lower and the upper values. Okay. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, this is from the sample from the SPSS. Contoh yang sama. So, you boleh run gunakan SPSS. 
Okay, you can run using SPSS. So this will be the answer. Okay, untuk SPSS punya analysis ni saya akan buat video lain eh. So I will make another video for the SPSS punya output. So you can just watch that video later on. Alright. So again, from the output, SPSS output, you can determine the number of sample that is 7. And then the mean values is 7041.43. And then you can calculate the sample standard deviation 1610.274. Okay, kalau kita compare balik kat atas ni, betul ke tak? Sama je eh. And then the standard error will be the 608. So how to get this value? This value is actually 1610.274 divided by the square root of 7. Okay, take the standard deviation divided the square root of the n. Okay. Since this one is using the Z statistic, uh, sorry, the, using the T distribution, Okay, the student's T, you can see that the value that you obtain will be similar to the one given in the output. Okay, sama je. 4785, yang ni 4784.99. Kenapa ada beza sikit kat sini? Sebab kat sini kita gunakan 3.707. Okay, we are using 3.707. This is the data from the table, right? But for calculation in the software, they use the whole value. Dia tak gunakan tiga titik perpuluhan. They didn't use the three decimal places. But they use more than three decimal places. So as long uh, depends on the statistical software. How many decimal places they uh, they, they use for the calculation part. Okay. So bergantunglah pada guys tu. So kat sini dia akan gunakan the actual value. Sebab tu ada sedikit ke... Uh, Error. Bukan error. Eh. It's not an error. Uh, ada sedikit perselisihan dari segi nombor kat situ. Eh. Nilai kat yang diperolehi. Sebab yang ni kita hanya gunakan 3.707. Sedangkan nilai yang sebenar adalah lebih daripada itu. Okay. Nilai sebenar adalah lebih daripada itu. Right. So let me try to get kalau ada kat sini yang saya boleh dapatkan. Eh. Nilai sebenar dia. Sekejap ni. Eh. Saya cuba cari. Kalau boleh dapat lah. Sorry guys. Okay. Maksudnya itu tak boleh. Okay. So boleh. So kalau guna Excel boleh lakuk kat sini. So kita boleh dapatkan daripada Excel pun boleh. So kalau dapatkan the actual values. So let me try to get the actual value eh. Yang kita gunakan kat sini. Hmm. I'm try to get it from the Excel. Eh? Okay. Okay, so nak tanya saya ada record tak? Sebab line saya macam slow. Okay, ada. Saya tengah record eh. So, nanti saya akan share the recording session untuk yang ni eh. Okay, itu Azmina dah jawab eh. So, saya dah record. So, this session saya record. Hopefully, the recording is okay lah. So, that saya boleh share dengan anda kemudian eh. Jangan tak okay macam sebelum ni. Last time saya buat recording. Saya lupa nak on mic. So, saya punya recording tu bisu. Okay. So, tak boleh nak share. So, this time insyaAllah okay. Saya, saya tak ada masalah. So, saya mic pun berfungsi dengan ok dan saya punya display pun nampak macam ok so hopefully tak ada masalah so kalau ada masalah uh, dengan saya punya recording for this one I will do a, a separate recording session untuk this part eh hopefully tak ada masalah lah so saya boleh share terus dengan anda nanti ok so I will get the T distribution values first eh okay, saya cuba dapatkan dengan T distribution Thank you. 
this to do. Okay, the decision X degrees of freedom cumulative. X degrees of freedom. Okay, right. Kita terima 0.1 kan? 0.1 tadi ya 0.01 0.01 0.05 sorry 0.05 akan sikit dia punya nilai ni saya nak ambil the actual value Okay, so ni adalah actual value eh. So this is the actual value daripada sebenar eh. Okay, ni lah actual value untuk yang 3.707 eh. Kalau kita dapatkan daripada Excel. So saya boleh dapatkan dari Excel. So if you calculate using this value, you gantikan dalam ni, you akan dapat exactly macam ni lah. Okay, tapi dalam kita punya standard table, uh, kita punya statistical table, We only use uh, up until three decimal place saja, so kita ambil yang ni saja. Sebab tu ada kes, uh, ada sedikit persisian nilai antara yang output dan yang kita kira secara manual. Okay, so ada kesalah tak ada salah eh? So cuma dari segi penggunaan dia punya ni. Eh? So yang mana nak guna, so boleh guna dua dua tak ada masalah. So kalau dalam exam kita kata okay, state the confidence interval, you can just use this value state. Kalau dia katakan evaluate the confidence level, you use this one. Okay, cuma you ambil nilai-nilai yang ni lah. So, all this value. So, you ambil daripada uh, output. Okay, tapi yang ni kita gunakan daripada tables. Alright. Boleh ya? So, kita tak tahu the actual value kat sini. Eh? So, this one is only obtained from the statistical software ataupun you boleh gunakan Excel untuk dapatkan yang ni. Okay, so this is the actual value untuk T distribution uh, alpha 0.01 divided by 2 for 6 degrees of freedoms. Alright. So, any questions so far? Boleh? Any questions? Ada soalan? Tak ada? So, the next thing yang kita nak lihat kat sini adalah the uh, estimation of the difference between two means. So, yang ni pun sama juga ada beberapa case yang you all perlu lihat. 
So yang pertama kita dah testing the difference between two means independent sample using Zack test. Okay, so dia ada dia punya assumption lah. So tak ada beza sangat yang sebelum ni, cuma sekarang ni berbeza sedikit sahaja dari segi dia punya formula. Okay, dari segi dia punya formula penggunaan sebab sekarang ni kita dah ada dua. Tadi kita ni ada satu je, kita ada X bar saja kan. But in this case right now, we have two. We have X one bar and X two bar. Okay, so the same thing here. When you have X one bar and X two bar, you also have sigma one and sigma two. Sama juga eh? So you have two variants. So you have two mean and two variants. So that's why we call this as estimation the difference between two means. So bermaksudkan this this ni difference between two means maksudnya you ambil x bar 1 minus x bar 2 ataupun vice versa. You can also take x bar 2 minus x bar 1. It depends on the situation. Okay, yang mana you nak ambil. So basically both will give you the same answer, the same result. Uh, meaning to say the same result at, at the end. Eh? So maksudnya dia punya conclusion tu adalah sama. Sebab kalau tengok dari segi dia punya penggunaan X bar 1 minus X bar 2 dengan X bar 2 minus X bar 1 It will give you a different values in term of its signs Dia akan memberikan ada nilai yang berbeza dalam bentuk tanda dia Satu akan jadi positif, satu lagi akan jadi negatif Okay, kalau katakan X bar 1 tu lebih besar dari X bar 2 Maka bila kita ambil X bar 1 minus X bar 2, dia akan jadi positif lah Tapi kalau kita ambil X bar 2 minus X bar 1, dia akan jadi negatif Alright so that is the only difference. So these are some of the assumptions. Both samples are random sample. Kedua-dua sample mestilah dalam bentuk random samples. Okay, apa maksud random sample ni? Just go through the textbook so you boleh faham lah apa maksud random sample. Or just google apa maksud random samples. Right? And then the sample must be independent of each other. So in this situation right now, we are looking at independent sample. So independent sample meaning to say that both group do not depend on one another. Result dalam group yang A dengan result dari group B tak boleh berkait antara satu sama lain. Itu yang masukkan dengan independent. That is, there can be no relationship between the subject in each sample. Dengan kata lain, tidak boleh ada subjek A itu berada dalam kumpulan 1 dan juga kumpulan 2 tak boleh. Yang itu dipanggil sebagai dependent sample. Yang ni dia berbeza. Contoh macam saya katakan dia lah. Kita nak beza, kita nak bandingkan antara ketinggian pelajar lelaki dengan pelajar perempuan. So of course they are from two different groups. Right? One is for male, the other one is for female. They are not related to one another. Okay? And then the standard deviation of both population must be known. Okay, kalau kita gunakan Zack test, standard population, uh, standard deviation of both population must be known. So that means sigma 1 and sigma 2 must be known. Okay, non variance for both sample. Okay, non variance for both sample. If the sample size are greater than 30, the population must be normally or approximately normally distributed. Kalau katakan population size dia adalah lebih besar daripada 30, maka uh, kita mesti tahu bahawa juga uh, dia ada dua, satu keadaan di mana kedua-duanya adalah non-variance. Kalau unknown variance that means kalau katakan kita tengok pula dia punya sample size kalau sample size dia greater than 30 kita kena mak, uh, maklumkan bahawa adakah uh, populasi tertabur secara normal ataupun tidak ok kalau secara normal baru kita boleh gunakan Z test so ini dua keadaan keadaan yang pertama both population must be non yang kedua kalau sample size adalah greater than 30 ok so apa formula dia so ini adalah formula dia untuk confidence interval yang non dengan unknown ok ada beza kat situ kan so beza sikit je tak ada beza banyak sangat eh ok kalau tadi kita gunakan x bar saja, tapi sekarang ni kita ada x bar 1 dengan x bar 2 kalau tadi kita ada dia punya sample standard deviation eh, the standard error dia sigma divided by square root of n 
Tapi sekarang ni dia gunakan yang ni. Okay, sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squared divided by n1 and n2. So, this one is for the case of sigma non. Non sigma eh. Kalau sigma unknown, so this will be the situation whereby we replace the sigma, kita kena replace sigma ni dengan nilai sample standard deviation ataupun sample variance. Yang ni kita gunakan uh, population variance ya. Eh? So this one is population variance. So this is population variance sebab population variance diketahui. Tapi kalau population variance tidak diketahui, so replace with the sample variance ataupun s squared eh so this way s squared okey itu saja bezanya tetapi untuk gunakan yang kedua ni keadaannya mestilah sample size greater than 30 and normally distributed Okay, normally distributed. Okay, barulah kita boleh gunakan yang the second one. Okay, so confident interval for the difference between two main independent sample, large samples. Right, so sebab tu kita gunakan Z kat sini. So, kita boleh gunakan Z macam biasa macam tadi. Sama je macam tadi. Cuma berbeza dekat bahagian depan ni saja. Eh. So, yang depan ni dengan dia punya sample standard deviation. So, sorry, the standard error. Okay, the standard error between two means. Right? So, this is an example. They give you the example over here. Okay, macam mana kita identify which one to be used. Okay, it says here a study using two random sample of 35 people. So, 35 people, random sample. So, yang ni apa? Lebih besar daripada... 30 kan? So, greater than 30. So, that means large sample size. Found that the average amount of time those in the age group, so the dual age group dekat sini, 26 and 35 span adalah 39.6. And then, satu lagi age group, 46.55, dia punya hours is 35.4. So, ada dua dekat situ. Okay. This is information based on the sample size. Lebih besar daripada 30. Kalau sample size lebih besar daripada 30, kita kena tengok juga. Eh? So, we have to check whether is the sample, uh, is the population standard deviation given or not. Dalam keadaan ni, dalam contoh ni, it is given. So, it says here, the population standard deviation. So, nak kenanya, non variance. So, kalau non-variance, straight away kita boleh gunakan Z distribution. Even though the sample size is small. Okay. Nah, tapi kalau katakan sample size uh, population standard size tak diketahui, tapi sample size lebih besar dari 30, kita boleh gunakan Z juga. Right. Tapi kalau kurang daripada 30, tak boleh guna Z. Sama dengan yang sebelum ni. Okay. Same as what we did before for the one sample. Alright, so here it gives you the population standard deviation to be 6.3 hours for group 1 and 5.8 hours for the second group. Okay, and then they ask you to find at 5% level of significance, find the 95% confidence interval. Okay, for the difference. So here kita dah identify... X1 dia tadi kita dah beri sama dengan 3.6.6 and then you have the X bar 2 equal to 35.4 and then for the non variance we have sigma 1 and sigma 2 equal to 5.8 and 6.3 and then for the third one we have N1 equal to 35 and N2 equal to 35. Can we have unequal sample in this situation? Yes. Okay. 
The answer is yes. Boleh tak kita dapatkan kat sini kalau katakan soalan tu melibatkan sample size yang tidak sama. Contohnya N1 sama dengan 35, N2 sama dengan 40. Tak ada masalah. Boleh guna. Okay. Yang jadi masalah apabila kalau katakan sample standard, uh, population variance tidak diketahui dan sample size kita salah satunya kurang daripada 30. So, tak boleh gunakan Z distribution. Okay, kita hanya boleh gunakan Z distribution kalau katakan it meets the requirement. So, in this situation, the sample size must be both greater than or equal to 30 untuk kedua-dua group. Dia tak boleh salah satu. Okay, kalau salah satu saja yang lebih dari 30, that means you have to use the T distribution. Okay. So, you want the Z alpha over 2. So, in this case, the Z alpha over 2 is given by 1.96. So, this one is untuk yang this part eh. Alright. So, as usual, substitute saja dalam formula. So, you have X1 bar minus X2 bar. Can you use X2 bar minus X1 bar? Yes. You still can use X2 bar minus X1 bar. Cuma dekat jawapan ni dia akan ada beza sikit lah. Dia akan dapat dalam untuk negative or positive. So, it depends. Alright. Okay. So, kalau you dapat kat sini, kalau dapat kat sini, kalau gunakan X2 bar minus X1 bar, of course, this one will be a negative value lah. So, dia akan dapat negative, dia akan dapat berbeza sedikit lah. Okay. So, ada masalah tak? Ada masalah sebenarnya. So, boleh dia guna. So, kat sini kita just boleh gunakan X1 bar minus X2 bar. And then, substitute saja formula nilai-nilai tu. So, X1 bar yang ni gantikan dalam ni. Okay. And then, yang ni gantikan dekat sini. And this one gantikan dekat sini. So, this three part. So, this part gantikan dalam ni. Okay. So, once you have this value, just calculate manually and you get the answer to be between these two values. <coughs> Okay, so dapat dah nilai tu eh. So, ini yang dia masukkan dengan dia punya difference, uh, confidence interval for the difference between two mean. We are 95% dia punya apa? 95. So, we are 95% confidence that the difference between the two mean value sorry, uh, the actual difference between the two mean value is between 1.363 and 7.03 7. So, itu yang dimasukkan kat situ eh. So, this is the interpretation. You can say that with 95% confidence there is a significant difference on the average amount of time spent per week on leisure activity between the two groups since zero is not included in the interval. So, apa maksudnya kat sini? Okay, yang ni adalah lebih kepada nak test. Ada perbezaan ataupun tidak? Okay. Okay, nak tengok ada perbezaan ataupun tidak. So, kalau dia tiada beza. Contohnya, kalau kita X1 dengan X2 tiada beza. Dengan kata lain, X1 bar is equal to X2 bar. This means that, kalau kita ambil the difference. So, X1 bar minus X2 bar equal to 0, right? So, this 0 indicate that no difference. Okay, no difference. So, maknanya kat sini, kalau katakan nilai kosong X1 bar sama tolak dengan X2 bar ataupun the other way around, if the value is zero, that means there is no difference between the two groups. Okay, kalau kat sini, contoh yang ni adalah berkenaan dengan, uh, for this example, it is regarding uh, time spent per week on leisure activities. So, the question is that, is there any difference between time spent per week for leisure activities between people age group 26 to 35 and people age group 46 to 55? So, nak tengok. Ada beza tak? Yang umur 26 ke 35 ni dengan 46 ke 55 ni, ada tak perbezaan antara dia orang punya masa yang dia orang luangkan masa untuk leisure activities untuk uh, aktiviti-aktiviti riadah contohnya. Okey, ada perbezaan ke tak? 
So, kalau tiada perbezaan, maknanya nilai min mereka adalah sama. So, dengan nilai min mereka adalah sama, maka kita akan dapati perbezaan min itu adalah bersamaan kosong. So, macam mana kita nak gunakan kita punya confidence interval untuk tentukan ada perbezaan ataupun tidak. So, one way is by looking at the confidence interval. Since we want it, kalau katakan no difference, that means the di the difference here will be equal to zero, right? So, kita tengok dekat dalam kita punya confidence interval, is zero included in the confidence interval or not? If zero is included in the confidence interval, so that means there is no difference. Kalau kosong tidak berada di dalam confidence interval yang kita dapati, maka terdapatnya perbezaan yang signifikan antara kedua-dua group. So in this situation, you can see that the values goes between, so if you draw in a number line, so you have zero over here, so here you have 1.363 and then you have 7.037. Okay, 037. So this is your confidence interval. So is zero included in here? No. So there's no zero in between these two values, right? So here, no zero. Okay, so which means that they differ. Okay, there is a statistically diff a significant difference between the time spent for leisure between age group 26 to 35 with the age group 45 to 50, 46 to 55. Okay, so itu yang dimasukkan kat sini. Kalau sekiranya nilai kosong berada di dalam confidence interval tadi, maka kita boleh katakan tiada perbezaan. So macam ni, ada perbezaan lah sebab tu dia katakan kat sini. It says here, uh, there is significant difference. Okay, there is a significant difference on the average amount of time spent per week on leisure activities between the two age groups since zero is not included in the interval. So, this is your conclusion. Okay, there is significant difference. And this is your okay. This is your reason, reason to support. your conclusion okay there yeah. so that is for the difference between two sample two means uh, top two sample where you can use the z test yang the second one using the t test so this is the situation eh? so kalau untuk yang t test ini adalah situasi ni so yang ni kita akan sambung kemudian lah so kita dah kesutukan masa we have uh, reach to the time right now is 5.49. You have 10 minutes to prepare for your another class. So I think we're going to stop here first.